Hello, everyone, and welcome to HCA's Succession After Show. I'm your host, Rasha Goel, for today's episode. And joining me for an in-depth discussion are my lovely co-host, Will Mavity. Hi, glad to be here, and I'm so glad Succession is back. I've been waiting, I guess, two years for it now. And right? I've felt every minute. Absolutely. Thanks, Will. And Sharonda Williams. Hi, everyone. So great to have you, Sharonda. I'm so excited to start this discussion. Like Will was saying, oh, man, we have waited for this. But before we get into our conversation, just a quick note for all of you. So if you are watching our discussion after show, just to let you know, we will be talking about spoilers. We're going to be breaking down the episode, talking about our favorite moments, and even predicting some of the upcoming episodes. So that being said, if you missed an episode or you didn't watch the latest episode and you don't want to be spoiled, Spoiled, we would recommend that you not watch this episode, this show, until you've actually caught up on those episodes. All right. So, and then come back and watch our video. And also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. We have such amazing content for all of you. So, we don't want you to miss out on anything. All right. I am ready to get this discussion started with my co host because I for sure have definitely been waiting for this show. So this season three, episode one, titled Succession, uh, written by Jesse Armstrong and directed by Mark Mylod. My Lord, I always mess up on his name and I just did it again. Mark Mylod, excuse me. Um, basically, this episode was the aftermath of season two's finale. So now what's happened is Kendall has decided to separate from the family. He basically calls out his dad at a press conference, betraying him by telling the press that Logan, his father, was fully aware of the company's misconduct, Waystar Royco, which is a huge global media and entertainment conglomerate. He was overseeing those legal settlements. This definitely has created a family rift, a family split, I would say. And now Kendall is basically... Uh, grabbing pieces of his life together, trying to create a new team to create a new base operation while the Roy family is trying to find a safe place and strategize their next move. Will and Sharonda, I'm going to say this is a family civil war. What were your initial thoughts? Sharonda, let's start with you. You know what? From just even hearing the score as the episode started this week, I was just like, it's been a long two years, but I'm so excited for Succession to be back. I was really just... It just brings you back home to why you've come to just know and love all of these characters in this series. The back and forth, the squabbles, and actually bringing it back to how we all got hooked of Logan actually trying to figure out who is going to take his place. And we finally get an answer in this episode. So I really, really enjoyed this premiere. And Will? Yeah, from the minute that that score kicked in, like you said, just straight up chills. You know, I missed it so much, and I always love the slight variations in the opening credits. I'm always looking to see if they'll give us clues of like whose season it's going to be, so to speak, based on who it focuses on. I thought this was a very eventful season premiere. This wasn't just one of those table setting premieres. It really puts you right in the action. You know, it has lots of kind of the hilarious moments, the endearing Gregisms that we all love. And um, it, it does set up several possible successors. It makes me think that the alliances are going to shift very quickly based on the actions that a couple of these characters make during this episode. Also tees up um, a, a, rom a romance, I think, that a lot of us are kind of, foolishly excited about i'm of course referring to uh jerry and roman if that happens we'll see oh god i have mixed feelings about that one will but you know i enjoyed this episode because i i thought it was kind of a slow build up to us really seeing inside each of the characters what i really enjoyed about it was basically the vulnerability i mean from season one to two you're seeing this dysfunctional family right and how each of these characters operate but i felt there were moments in this episode where each of them was really vulnerable and it's almost like you kind of you, you felt bad for them or your heart kind of opened up to them and seeing them in a really raw element. And I love how you both mentioned the music. I'm going to just talk about one of um, 
the the filming of it too, the style as far as shooting it, like you said, feeling it like you were right there and so real, the way it's been shot and captured too with the snap zooms and just the way they've moved through each of the scenes, it's still so captivating um, and it really keeps you drawn into the episode. So yeah, I, I thought it was a great season premiere. Um, was there a favorite moment that either of you had or that just kind of sticks in your mind after watching this first episode? Will, we can start with you this time. Yeah, I, I can't say so much that there's a single moment, but there's a couple lines I liked. Uh, early on, uh, I think Roman asks Logan if he can ride in the car with him, and he's like, suck my dick. And then he's like, ah, yeah, spoken just like a father to his son as the sexual assault allegations roll in. And then um, I, I thought it was hilarious when you see this episode just kind of reminds us, I think, a little bit that Kendall is to a deg degree full of crap and isn't necessarily equipped to run the company. And his moment where he's like, yeah, I got a lot of a lot of women working here, so I must be doing something right. You know, just like this very like self-righteous, but not really willing to understand or back it up, especially after he like talks over the PR consultants right before that. So uh, I, I think those are probably two of my favorite moments. Sharonda? I mean, first for me, just being able to hear Logan say F off, like who would have thought this would be the phrase that I needed um, these past two years to be said on screen. But also, too, as Will said, the whole scene, basically every scene with Ronan, this episode was hilarious from how his dad reacts to him. But most importantly, as he is trying to seduce Jerry, that was literally one of my favorite moments um, of the episode, in addition to Kendall cutting off the communications team that is literally trying to pitch how to save his um, image, how to boost it even more. I thought that whole interaction between them was absolutely hilarious. Thanks. Guys, I'm going to say one of my favorite scenes was actually when they're in the lounge, the entire Roy family is there. You just get this sense of how powerful Logan is just within his own family. I know we've seen that within season one or two, but you know, this guy, it's like nothing can bring him down. He is like, like they say in there, he's the comeback kid, right? Like nothing can take him down. He's constantly, so that scene for me was just, it was fun to watch because you're seeing again, different reactions from different family members and, and some of the team members, but Logan is just commanding that scene like anything. And so for me, that was a lot of fun to watch. So I mentioned vulnerability earlier. We're seeing more vulnerability within the characters. For each one of you, is there a favorite character you have or, or maybe that one that you kind of had that little soft spot for going into season three? Sharada, we can start with you. I think Ronan is still a very sympathetic character to me because even with his sarcasm, his humor, he still wants his dad's love. And we see this in the phone call that he has to his dad. He, I mean... All of season two was him really trying to make sure that he can show people that he's an adult, he's grown up, that he's more than capable to take over this company. And then when we see the phone call of him just trying to root for himself, but also too, to let his dad know that it, he loves him and agrees with whatever decision that he makes, um, to see his reaction to that and then to see Logan just be like, he's out as soon as he shows any type of emotion to his father. Um, I think you want to root for Ronan. You want him to prove everybody wrong. I think he is the real underdog out of all the children um, that you really want him to be able to take over the company. So I'm going to vote for him. Yeah, I was, I was curious about that Ronan moment, if he was in fact even trying to plug himself or if he genuinely thought this was a good angle to push Jerry because obviously he has romantic interest in her but I think he also probably sees her as his best pathway to power I mean I, I do think he wanted his dad's affirmation but I, I thought that might have been a little bit more Machiavellian on his part just basically saying I'm probably out of the game but you should look to Jerry um, but I also love later in the episode when he wants to be the one to tell Shiv that she's not going to be CEO I thought that phone call was hysterical because then it's you get to see vulnerable Roman and then he goes back to being the same old Ronan within the span of, uh, you know, 15 minutes, which I thought was pretty hilarious. But uh, I, I think I'm probably with a lot of people when I see my personal favorite, maybe not the most complex, but um, I, I love cousin Greg. I, I root for him. He's, he's such a doofus. And this episode really showcases that repeatedly 
but I think I, I somehow do think he's going to end up on top at the end of it all. You know, the, the show literally opened with him in the first season puking at the theme park. And um, I, I, I want to see how that's going to happen because I feel like it's not going to be any of the kids. I feel like it's cousin Greg. That's so funny you say that. I, you know, because I, I feel that way with Greg too. I'm curious to see how everything unfolds with him and these goofy moments he has. But guys, I'm going to have to say, I my heart goes out to Shiv. Um, you know, I it's been interesting watching her because to me, she's a very strong, powerful woman. But yet, you know that her heart has been wounded at living in this family uh, that's dominated by men and still having to stand her ground. I mean, I feel like she's, if anybody had to lead that company to work outside of the company, it would be her. Like she's capable of running another company or being a part of another um, entity. But I just, especially in this episode, uh, knowing that she's not getting it, I just feel really heartbroken for her. And I feel like not only is her professional life kind of kind of a mess, but even her love life, I mean, even that's not really stable either. So I kind of feel bad for her. But I send a little heart out to her. Um, coming up, episode two, any predictions on what we can anticipate to see? Sharonda, we'll start with you. I mean, I'm predicting that Jerry is going to cave to Ronan's charm, his advances, and they're going to start some type of relationship. But I'm most, I really want to see, I honestly thought that when Shiv said that there was going to be a change of plan, after Ronan calls and lets her know that she's out now as CEO, I really thought that she was going to go join forces with Kendall. Um, I think for me, I'm most excited to see how these alliances are going to shift. We saw Kendall make phone calls to people who were there to help Logan, but it seemed like, especially with Frank, that it seemed like he was teetering towards Kendall's way. So I'm most excited to see how that's going to play out, how the relationship with Lisa as his lawyer is going to play out, who is actually going to be able to win um, I just want to see them duke it out. Yeah, I uh, I think you're spot on. I think Frank is definitely vulnerable. You know, unlike Jerry, he did take Kendall's call, you know, as soon as they got off the airplane and uh, he deleted the evidence and clearly was, was intrigued by Kendall saying, basically, there's a place for you. And I think that Logan really didn't help himself this episode in terms of ensuring Frank's loyalty by just constantly saying stuff like, you know, I don't trust you. Uh, no, you know, like you're useless. And then of course you don't want him in charge. He's going to fire you as soon as he gets here. So he's, he's not exactly doing a lot to ensure Frank's going to stick around. I, I would be pretty surprised if Frank doesn't jump ship and go over to Kendall's team at some point. But I, um, I agree with you. I definitely think Shiv is turning around to go join forces with Kendall. I mean, like in the trailer, we do see there's a moment where they're meeting in what looks to be the apartment that Kendall is currently in. So I think that makes sense. Um, I, I don't think that Jerry is ultimately going to be the CEO at the end of this season. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know who will be, but I, I would be kind of surprised if it's not one of the kids in some capacity. Uh, Ultimately, and I, I completely agree with you that I, I think she and Roman are going to sleep together and probably develop a genuine romantic relationship at some point. I agree with both of you, actually, on some of these points, especially the romantic relationship between the two of them. And um, I'm interested, you know, this is a very backstabbing situation. It, it, when I watch this family, it's almost like they're looking at a lot of these external factors that are damaging to them, not realizing that they themselves are kind of creating this split within them. They're so dysfunctional at so many levels. So I'm really interested to see that, yes, if Shiv does come and join Kendall, how that how is that going to play out? And really all these calls that Kendall is making at the end of the day, who does end up joining his team and who's going to kind of stick it out with him instead of backstabbing his him as well. So I, I'm really curious to, to see how that's all going to pan out. I feel like the three of us could just sit here and talk about this show forever and keep reflecting on some of the older episodes. Um, but we have to go now. So before we head out, Sharonda, how can our viewers find you? Where can they find you? Um, they can find me on all social media channels at pay or wait um, or on pay or wait.com. Um, but yeah. Great. Thank you. And Will, how about you? You can find me on Twitter at Mavericks Movies. 
Thank you. And you can all find me on all social media platforms at Rasha Goel. And you can see all of our names are listed there with our handles. So thank you again for joining the HCA Succession After Show. We hope you enjoyed our show today. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And join us next week as the three of us break it down for episode two. Have a great week, guys. Thank <laughs> you.